So everyone's here who's going to be here. I am Seth Arnold. I'm on the Ubuntu security team. I am uh, here to promote the AppArmor mandatory access control system. Uh, Debian has considered adding Debian, uh, adding AppArmor to the default of the Buster installation. And I, I very much love this idea and I'd, I'd like to encourage it. I'd like to help uh, in whatever way I can. Intragary has uh, been the spearhead behind this campaign, trying to bring the AppArmor mandatory control system to everybody. And I absolutely love the way he's been working with everyone. It, it's been truly fun. It's, uh, you know, I've been using Debian since 97 or 98, give or take. Uh, apt was around. You didn't have to use deselect, but most people still use deselect. So it's uh, fun to be able to give back to a community I've used for 20 years, something that I have worked on for almost 20 years. It's uh, truly fun. Anyway, uh, I am on the Ubuntu security team employed by Canonical. Uh, unfortunately, my job is not full-time app armor, but I love my job as it is. So, the first thing to realize is that app armor is a mandatory access control system. And to understand a mandatory access control system, it helps to contrast it against a discretionary access control system. This is the standard permissions that everybody knows and loves. Read, write, execute, user, and group on a file. The DAC permissions are a property of the file. The DAC permissions are set by the owner, and the owner can make mistakes. Owners can give privileges to too many people. We've all seen Chmod 777 as scripts or program advice or stack overflow answers. Chmod 777 will fix your problems, and users don't understand what this means. Furthermore, it, it doesn't actually apply to the programs that the user runs. Because the, the programs run on behalf of the user, the program can simply change permissions on files as they wish. So there's no way to keep your Firefox from reading your tax information. There's no way to keep your mail client from reading your SSH keys. Everything can interact with your GPG keys, no matter how well the GPG system tries to stuff that into a specific agent. So the mandatory access controls are access controls that are set by the administrator. And different mandatory access control systems have different ways of doing this. In AppArmor, the policies are process oriented. And you can see that using the, the Z flag to PS. And we've got a nice handy wrapper, AA unconfined, that will show you significantly less information that's a little more readable. And you can see on my laptop a handful of programs that are confined are the crony daemon, the H client, cups D, cups browse D, and they're confined by these different profiles. Linux systems have four major Mac varieties. There's SE Linux, it's also called SE Android, depending on where you're using it, AppArmor, SMAC, and Tomoyo. AppArmor started in 1997. It started out as a research project, moved to a DARPA-funded research project, was commercialized through YRX Communications, that was acquired by Novell and integrated into SUSE, and Novell, for all their faults, actually did something wonderful. They open-sourced all of it. Of course, the kernel module was always GPL version 2, but it had a compiler that was basically mandatory, and the compiler was proprietary, and this basically killed everybody's enthusiasm for the tool. No one really wanted to use a proprietary tool. However, Novell open sourced it. Once Novell open sourced it, it was integrated into Ubuntu, SUSE, Pardis, PLD, and a handful of other distributions, some fairly niche, but you know, it was always nice to get an extra one. Debian is currently testing AppArmor to be an AppArmor on default for Buster. And it's going pretty well. Uh, I have to say it's not been perfect, but everything has been a learning opportunity and Intragary's done a fantastic job responding to bug requests from people pointing out problems, faults, requests for help, requests for assistance, requests for features. It's, it's been truly a, a fun engagement with the community. AppArmor, SE Linux, Mac, and Tomoyo work together to build the Linux security module system. LSM is shared infrastructure that all the security modules can use. Uh, it does allow for a certain amount of plug and play. You can decide to boot with AppArmor, and the next boot you can decide to boot with SE Linux. 
Uh, the setup times and efforts of the different security modules are different. They have different goals, different methods. So it's not necessarily convenient to flip from one to the other, but you certainly can. And AppArmor on by default would be you know, relatively simple and straightforward. It doesn't require relabeling your file systems. It just requires the profiles to confine whatever you wish to be confined. And this is an interesting point where AppArmor is different from some of the other choices. In AppArmor, you have confined processes and unconfined processes. The unconfined processes are completely trusted. It doesn't matter who runs them. If they run as root, they're trusted. If they run as a user, they're trusted. If you don't trust it, you can find it. And once a process is confined, then suddenly everything with, that that process wishes to do must be listed in the profile. It is a whitelist, so if it's going to use a capability, you have to list that capability. If it's going to read a file, you have to list that you want that file to be read. So that you can actually have an idea of what I'm talking about, here is a profile that one of our users has contributed for the MTR program. I don't know if you're familiar with MTR. It's a wonderful little trace route tool. It's a thousand times better than the original trace route tool. I think that was Van Jacobson. Apologies to Van Jacobson, but MTR is just simply nicer. We can see here uh, it's a fairly small profile. That's because MTR doesn't do much. It does talk on the network, and it is possible that if somebody finds bugs in MTR that they could exploit it. And because it has to run set, set you at root in order to do raw networking, it would be a very tempting target to exploit. So somebody could very well come up with a net filter module that if it spots an MTR in process across their network, exploit it and gain root privileges on your system. So here's a simple profile for MTR that provides a handful of capabilities, capability net raw, Capability set in, capability set you in. Net raw is because it will do raw networking. Set in and set you in are so that it can drop privileges on its own. Network inet raw is so that it can do the raw networking tasks it needs. It has access to its executable and it has access to the term info. It wants to know how to display stuff pretty in an incursive style interface. That's it. It doesn't have right access to anything on your file system. It doesn't have the ability to load kernel modules, doesn't have the ability to modify files, can't send signals to anything. This is all it does, networking and dropping privileges. This is another profile I use. It's extremely small, but I use it practically every week. It allows reading everything on the operating system, but it doesn't allow writing anything. It doesn't allow any network access. So I can use this to inspect zip files. On the security team, people send us zip files full of crazy stuff all the time. And I would be a fairly tempting target for somebody. So this is a tool that I use in order to inspect zip files. This is a tool I use when I use object dump. It can read whatever I want to feed to a program, but it can't write anything. It can't get data off the network. It can't do any privileged operations. It does nothing. It can print output. It's important to realize that AppArmor profiles are written from the perspective of the process, not the system. This is sometimes kind of hard for people who might be familiar with SE Linux. Uh, it doesn't matter what a file is known as globally. That doesn't really exist. Instead, it's it, based on what process thinks the name is. Because the process namespaces can change, it looks up names on the process namespace. Capabilities are looked up as part of the user namespaces. So a program that's executing in a user namespace will be able to use Capsys admin, and it's not the real Capsys admin, it's just the Capsys admin that the process thinks it has. When a process is confined, it's pretty much stuck that way. The only way the process can get out of the profile is to transition to another profile either through an exec call or through an explicit call to do a transition. Or if there's a specific allowance in the policy for a program to be able to unconfine itself. Uh, this actually exists. I've never seen it needed, never seen it used, but it does exist. And a process becomes confined either when 
an unconfined process executes a program, uh, there's an attachment specification, and with the MTR program, oh, there's a nice typo, uh, the user sbin MTR up here will catch any execution of user bin MTR or user sbin MTR and attach it into this MTR profile. We use these ugly shell globs to describe the different path names across multiple distributions. SUSE has some files in some places, Debian has it in other places. So this is one way to adapt, and normally when we have to use an ugly name like this, we will give it a pretty name like profile MTR, so that when you use PSZ, it will show up as just MTR. In order to use that read all no net profile that I showed earlier, you can use the AA exec tool. It knows how to manipulate the, CISA, the procfs entries to say, I want my next execution to be in this profile. And you can see you try pinging and socket calls denied. You don't have the capability for it. You don't have the network capability for it. Another aspect that's, that's commonly difficult for people to understand is that users don't really exist, processes exist. And the process executes on behalf of a user or a service. So the process will have multiple user ID. They'll have file system ID, user ID, effective ID, saved ID. I, there's like seven of them. And similar with group IDs. It'll have capabilities. And AppArmor now adds security domains. All the processes are created from a parent process. And all processes inherit the privileges of their parent. The, the profile, or, or the authority the program has, the permissions that it has, can change across exec VE calls. So set you would set get executables can change permissions. Close on exec file descriptors are closed. And in this case, AppArmor now adds you may transition policy if the policy calls for it. So you need to approach profiling systems with a certain amount of desire of what exactly it is you want to accomplish. You have to know your threat model of what it is you're protecting against. If you trust your local users and you want to confine your network, you don't trust the network packets, then you might just confine the daemons themselves. That way, if the daemon is compromised, it can't get beyond what it was already allowed to do. Uh, if you don't trust the local users on the system, you may want to in instead focus on the shell scripts that start the services. Shell scripts are very difficult to write correctly, and they quite frequently assume that local users are completely trusted. So it may make sense to move your policy writing a little earlier in the execution. And if you have a goal of confining users, say you have staff that are allowed to do anything and students that are allowed to do nothing, well, you may want to confine your PAM applications. All users will enter the system through a PAM-aware application. And once you have done that, you can confine their shells or their user interfaces, however that works out. So here's a simple profile for, I don't trust my users, but I want them to be able to do their own data. They can execute anything that's in bin or user bin. They're allowed to use libraries. And they're allowed to do anything in their own home directories to data they own. AppArmor doesn't actually have a way yet to say a user can only operate within its home directory because the kernel doesn't know what a home directory is. But you can say the user has to own the data that they're going to operate on. So they can't read each other's files. They can't write each other's files. They can't link to each other's files. They have to be able to own their, they can only operate with data they already own. Now these text interfaces are friendly for people, but they aren't very friendly for the computers. And AppArmor's first version, when I started working with it in 2000, was indeed basically a plain text that the kernel interpreted all the way through. That doesn't work real well. It uh, has terrible execution performance, and we have since changed it to a compiled state machine. The state machine has a guaranteed execution time. It will not take longer than two steps per input character on a file name, for example. 
the input is thus bounded and you can't actually use AppArmor as a way to create a denial of service attack just by saying I want to access this specific file with a crazy file name over and over. Regex engines are quite popular attack targets. If you feed them something that's 18 characters long, you can tie up the CPU for minutes. And AppArmor has a different implementation that has restrictions, and those restrictions allow us to have very predictable execution. AppArmor 3.0, when it re will release soon, will have multiple caches. We cache these policies as they are compiled, and these multiple caches will allow users to swap between kernels as kernels add new features. Oh, that's fantastic. It's already in Debian two with uh, AppArmor 2.13. That's fantastic. So AppArmor can mediate files and directories, capabilities, ptrace, signals, mount, R limits, coarse grain networking. This is something Ubuntu has had as a external patch for absolute ages. And we are finally getting around to an upstream first policy. And so this is something that has now been pushed into the mainstream kernel. And unfortunately, due to some difficulties, it will require a slightly different user space to use. But that is coming shortly. Uh, unfortunately, it is coarse grain networking controls. You can say this process is allowed to use INET, INET v4. Whatever address families you like, but you know everybody cares about INET and INET, and INET v6. <laughs> Uh, you can say whether it can use uh, streams, datagrams, whatever. Uh, Dbus is another thing that Ubuntu supports, and it's partially in the upstream kernel. To do it correctly also requires Unix sockets to be mediated, and that is also not yet upstream. It's coming soon. I hope it's in the next 418, but it might be 419. We'll see how this goes. Anyway, what we can do is already extremely useful. Limiting access to files and directories was where AppArmor started. Capabilities made AppArmor the easiest way to use Linux capabilities for many years. You could grant this process, you know, capsys admin, and it wouldn't be able to do capsys net things. Or you could grant capsys net and not capsys admin. Ptrace prevents programs from using the debugging facilities of the kernel to escape their jails. Signals means you can drastically increase the reliability of your system if programs can't just send pro signals to each other. Signals are a very popular attack boundary. Uh, signal handlers are normally pretty poorly written. People don't understand signals well. And if you can confine somebody from sending signals, you can drastically increase the reliability of your system. Uh, AppArmor is also the easiest way to set R limits on a process. If a program doesn't already have this built in, typically you have to run to a shell command, to a shell built in, in order to do something similar. But you may not always have a shell in a location where it's convenient to execute our limit commands or U limit commands. So AppArmor can set these on runtime. And there are other aspects of the system that we may work with in the future. Uh, there's no guarantee on any of these. Uh, the IMA aware policy, I don't know if you guys have heard of this either. Uh, IMA is an integrity measurement system, and it's basically signed binaries, signed executables, signed libraries, signed everything. And we have a contributor from Google who wants this on their operating system for their own internal use, and they've been kind enough to contribute this to upstream work. And hopefully this will be available for everybody soon. Uh, everybody wants fine-grained networking. It's one thing to say, my web server can do INET. But it's quite another to say, my web server can do INET on port 80 and port 443. So this is something that everybody has wanted for many years, and the implementation is difficult, and it's always just a second priority. Uh, hopefully it'll come soon. <laughs> Uh, shared memory segments are currently completely unmediated. Not many things use them, so it hasn't, no one said, hey, this is something I need for my use case, but you know, it wouldn't be hard to add. Same with semaphores. Uh, X11 ACE, if we were to implement this, would allow us to give basically compartment mode workstations, which is something that the Department of Defense spent billions on back in the 90s, 
and nobody ever used because they were difficult, but we could do the same thing. Uh, ZFS is just something that I thought would be fun to do. I've been a fan of ZFS for years. Uh, C groups, overlay file system support, uh, policy for specific users and groups, kernel key rings, Chiroot. Currently, we can only confine whether or not a process can call Chiroot. We don't have any ability to say, you can Chiroot to this specific directory. That's something that we would probably like to have. And CIPSO is security labeled networking, so that you can only interact with specific tasks on other hosts within a network. If you have a secured network, you can say, you know, have a high security traffic and low security traffic and just outright label your traffic and say which processes can interact with which. One compelling new feature that AppArmor has had and is uh, finally getting some actual traction is multiple namespaces. You can create namespaces for your profiles so that you can have one the global namespace for this main operating system and LXD can have their own profiles. Libvirt can have their own profiles. SnapD can have their own profiles. Docker can have their own profiles. And this allows them to use the system profiles to protect the systems from the guests and allows the guests to then use profiles as if they were a full normal system. One that we would like to add in the future is for users to supply their own profiles. This does expose more kernel interfaces to user space, so it, it needs to be done carefully and thoughtfully, and hopefully with a bit of fuzzing. Another recent development is AppArmor can stack profiles. And this is what I, I mentioned with LXD or SnapD being able to protect the host from the guest with one set of profiles, and then the guest can then use profiles itself to keep applications separated, to keep users separated, whatever they need to do, they can do as well. Other options with stacking, and uh, this is a little more, I don't know how many people have actually used this in production, but it's possible to apply a blanket profile to all your users. Say you've got students and you don't trust your students, or you've got sysadmins and you do trust your sysadmins. You can stack profiles so that they can, you know, your users are stuck with absolutely no access to system controls. They can't run sudo, say. Um, per application profiles can keep applications separated within a user, so your Firefox won't have access to your GPG keys. Uh, you can also provide other kind of simple profiles like my read all no net that have one purpose and that purpose is to prevent access to the network or prevent access to capabilities, prevent access to ptrace. And these can be layered together in a, a matrix or a lattice to come up with some fairly creative policies that are extremely simple to write. And I'm sure there's a lot more interesting things that are possible here. I think, yes, there's time remaining. Let's do a small demo. Oh no. So here is the process listing on my host system. Just my laptop. Yes. I have no idea how. <laughs> it is a. Uh, nope. Yeah. No, I do not. <laughs> Xterm. Xterm. Hey, I have Xterm. Is that large enough? Oh, it looks better than white than whatever color you're on. Oh, I didn't even think of that. Okay, so here's a fairly unreadable PSZ output.
and you can see that I've got a bunch of LXD gunk over here. A bunch of unconfined ZFS processes. Pulse audio is enforced. I don't trust pulse audio. <laughs> DH client enforced, Firefox enforced. Cups D enforced, and this LXD gunk. And again, let's see here. And within my LXD instance that I've got called Healthy Fly, the profile name is just user has been engine X. It's in enforce mode. You can see I've got a confined, it's just a standard pr profile applied and the LXD instance has no idea that there is another AppArmor profile on the outside. And the LXD profile on the outside is protecting the host system and the AppArmor profile on the inside is protecting the rest of the guest from Nginx. And in order for every access control to be allowed, it has to be allowed by both profiles in the stack. And these stacks can be arbitrarily deep. However much mess you want to make, you're allowed to make. So I, I got a feeling that this is uh, Game changer is such a stupid word, <laughs> but it, it really is uh, exciting for me to see that we can have AppArmor applying to have multiple security goals, one within the container and one outside the container, and they're working in conjunction with the same mechanism. I, this is something that truly excites me. I hope we see more of this in the future. I believe that is it, yes. So at this point, I'd like to open it up to questions, comments, thoughts, hate mail, love mail. <laughs> I'll take that as love mail. <laughs> All right. Oh. Um, you mentioned uh, uh, <coughs> applying stacked uh, Aparmo profiles to users. Uh, what is the preferred mechanism for doing that? Because I've been using PAM to do it, and it's not particularly fun. No, it is not. The PAM AppArmor module is a pain in the butt because it requires using change hat. And I believe if it were to allow just applying a profile without change hat, it would be far more pleasant. Does that sound right? Yep. Okay, then I will. I will work on that. Oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's I. I it's, Unfortunately, something that I have always felt would be better served with a different mechanism. And you know, so long as nobody seems to be using it, it's just, you know, I don't run a shell server. So it's kind of hard for me to, you know, I, it's a feature I feel passionate about, but not enough to do for myself. <laughs> yeah, so thank you. I appreciate that. Well, thanks a lot for hopefully fixing it and <laughs> anyway for working on Apamo in general. Hey. All right then, I think that's that. Thank you all, appreciate it. <laughs>